your family's dignity and strength over the past few days has moved people on both sides of this conflict. If it were up to you, what would you like to see happen now? We heard about that lady, uh, the one from Dublin trying to do something. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch her name. Mrs. McHugh. Yes, Mrs. McHugh. And we're clinging to that. The hope that some good can come out of this, because if you'd been in there a few minutes ago, you'd know that it has to. I mean, that can't be for nothing. It has to. I'm not here to tell any of you what to do. The, the truth is, I don't really have a clue. We want to hear from you. We want as many of you as possible to stand up and speak tonight. Because no more bombs can be planted in our name. When I did my research on you all, I picked up your ages and it don't Oh, ages? Ages. Picked up your ages. No, uh, what struck me was that all of you, apart from Vicky, were teenagers when the Warrington bomb happened. And I think you're only 10, if my maths wow. is correct. Um, wow. So, is that right? Yeah, what I was going to ask you is I mean, when you were first invited to be engaged in this film, this project. Did you think, well, I don't know anything about it, or did you think, just go for it, because it's, it's an acting project, and I'll, you know, more often than not, I'll accept offers that come along, or how did you feel when you knew what the I, programme was about? Per personally, I, I definitely had a recognition of it. I, it was, when you say I was a t I can't remember the exact age I was, but Warrington was such an event. Immediately, your interest is sort of, pricked with that and it's um but we knew it was the 25th sort of anniversary to mark the bombing yeah and this really it was an opportunity to, for us as actors to sort of delve into the background and your lives and to really mark that event as best we possibly could really so um it was sort of an honor really to be asked to do it but it was definitely in my consciousness somewhere. I don't know about the rest of the guys. No, I, I didn't well, remember it, but I remember when I first met Fergus, the director, to talk about it, the picture of the two boys just seemed to resonate with me as if I'd recognised seeing that as a kid, because I was 10, so it, you know, I wasn't watching the news and no, fall out. No. Um, <clears throat> But for some reason, the pictures just seemed to stand out. And whether or not that was just a subconscious of, I'd seen it a lot as a kid, because we did have a lot of newspapers, you know, at home and that kind of thing. I don't know, but I certainly wasn't aware of what happened. And I, I definitely wasn't aware of what happened with Susan. Right. So it was quite new to me. I didn't know about it at all. Didn't you? No. I didn't know about it. I've said this before, but I think, um, I don't know exactly why I didn't know about it, but I am from a, um, a Northern Irish household. So I, I think that my, my dad ad actively shielded me from things. I think probably subconsciously he did shield me from um, any kind of atrocity that was linked with the IRA. It certainly wasn't discussed in our house. Um, I so I didn't know I about it at that. all. Yeah, I can understand that. Again, I've invited you all to become patrons and to my great delight you all said yes. Again, okay. your frankness is, is expected here. I mean, do you feel comfortable <coughs> being involved in a charity which its core business is the prevention of terrorist acts and also the assistance to people who've been survivors or victims of terrorist acts? I mean, does it sit with you comfortably? Not completely. Does it's it? it's, um, <coughs> it's testament to this foundation that the work that you do now is as important as the day 
you said it's sad, but it's a sad reality, mm. unfortunately, that the work you do now is as necessary as it was then. And we are living in conflict all the time. <coughs> and even more so now, I think, um, from when you started, in terms of the education that you do here and educating people about prejudice. We're dealing with that on a really major scale in this country at the moment, especially politically what we're going through, that people are living through hate and prejudice all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and of course social media, <coughs> it's got its pluses, but it's got its minuses. I mean, there's such a lot of bile and hatred and yeah. stuff that's spewed out now. Awful well, assumptions that um, yeah. terrorism is linked with being a Muslim or terrorism. Stupid... Um, <coughs> facile assumptions and it's so important that there is a centre that is trying to educate people about um, how we talk about these things mm -hmm. and break through the barriers with young people, with, with everybody. Yeah. And are you happy to be advocates of that in, yeah. in your lives when the chance arises? Well the Manchester <coughs> attack for me was a real shocker. I felt like it was <coughs> so cold, so um, just so out of this world. And targeting you children. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was exactly, it was just too much to deal with. And actually, when the day arose and it happened, and it just shook the world for a bit. Yeah. Um, and I know you, you said, you know, you've since that happened, you guys have been instrumental to helping people um, from the attack. You know, is that going to happen again? <coughs> yeah, probably. probably. It's probably yes. highly likely. Um, where are people going to go? What else exists? Um, I've, I, this is the first time I've been here today, and you just go, right, I get it. It's, I can <coughs> see what, what's being done here now, and it's, it's not just like a little small community centre, <coughs> which is sometimes what you expect when there's charities fighting something that isn't as popular as your cancer charities, and those charities that are um, more recognisable to people. Well, I haven't had any terrorism in my personal life, but I think attacks like the Manchester attack, it did start to filter where people went, oh God, I know somebody who knows somebody mm. that's daughter was killed in that attack or something. And it's starting to get closer <coughs> to home. Um, so I think given what happened to you and Wendy, it just goes to show that we're all starting to understand it a little bit better, I think. Mm. And what you do here is only going to help people that are going to be affected by it because it's just out of control. The, the business world, it seems to me, are the people who really ought to be taking note of what we're doing. Because if there's a major 7 7, 9 11, one of those scales, yeah. it really impacts business. The pound plummets, the trade stops, the tourism stops, Americans don't mm -hmm. travel when things happen in Europe. All those implications affect businesses. But how do I get the word out to them? Because there's only, in the end, a small team here mm -hmm. trying to get the word out. So, where was, where was I going with all this? Basically, the more committed patrons we can bring on board, all I ask is that whenever conversations, opportune moments arise, that you think, ah, actually, I should be telling the charity, this person or yeah. that person about this foundation, yeah. and maybe affecting an introduction. I am saying that quite plainly, because that's, apart from loving you all, and really getting to know you, that's fabulous. I need you to be an extension yeah. Yeah, yeah. of our cons, in effect. Are you comfortable with that? Well, David Beckham. God, do you know David? I don't know David. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to do that in Oh dear. Even at the weekend, like, the news was on and there was a report, and it wasn't specifically sort of a terror, um, it wasn't trying to frighten anybody, but they were talking about terrorism, and it was as if they were saying this. I think, I don't know if this is completely right, but. 3,000 current people that they're monitoring at the moment. Under surveillance, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Um, I didn't know if my figure was right then. But it's, it's two about to 3,000. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, not yeah. far off. Where you just go, okay, so currently in this country, the police are looking into 3,000 different people that are you know, in, involved potentially in a terror attack or an event that's going to... I mean, yeah. and the problem with that is that they, yeah. lots of those people are homegrown kids, yeah. Yeah. just disillusioned <coughs> kids who probably come from or poverty, who to come somebody. from yeah, who are desperate kids who've not been. You may you may imagine that we only ever work out of we go around the country. Oh no, oh, no, we no do. yeah, yeah, we're working yeah. lots of northern towns and yeah. cities, and we're mostly in the north. 
But again, that's for funding reasons. Yeah. There reaches a point where you need all those leads into these places, like yeah. I said earlier, that, that multiplies uh, by a huge number our opportunities to have new conversations with people who hold, hold purse strings, budget holders, you know, FDs of businesses, whatever mm -hmm. it might be, mm -hmm. chairman of the board of company X. You might say, actually, I know him or I know somebody else. I can get you in there. That's perfect. That is absolutely perfect because then we'll go in and do the talking. Yeah. So it's providing pathways, I suppose. Yeah. Colin needs so much more advertising for this. He needs so much. You need to be not television advertising on that scale, but the word needs to be sort of put out there so much more to 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 help you because you've got something so special and unique. And I think this this matter that we're talking about terrorism and everything else is going to get worse. And I think because you have such an extraordinary place and with extraordinary people who are all caring and specialised in your areas. Um, you know, he will be probably using these three actors to, to promote this even further through the networking side. Well, you're running the marathon, but, aren't you? Oh, I said oh, that. Marathon, marathon. I did say that to him. I said he's got oh, to run the marathon. Immediately. I said that. We do need to run the marathon. We need we to do run the, the marathon. The three of you. I'll but my, my younger... Clock. Yeah, no. <laughs> I think you should do that. Yeah. yeah. I'll bring you the oranges. No, yeah, we're we're the point. Anything, anything we can do, we will do it. Yeah. 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 And there's That's no it. reason for us not to want to. When we all did Mother's Day, and I'm not speaking on behalf of you all, but, you know, we all knew what we was walking into. We all knew the story, and we all went, this is your worst nightmare. Yeah. And because of the parts that we all played, we got really close to you guys, weirdly, without even meeting you. We got close to... Timothy and Jonathan, because we felt we had a you know a story to tell in a, in a way that people could understand it and it could resonate and actually it could go out to the public and go if you've never heard of this story you have now, <laughs> and this is reality of it and this is the world that we're still living in today, um, in in some ways. So there's no reason for us to turn around and say one, of course we'll be patrons and two, we'll do whatever we can. I think as well we're all you know fairly impatient people. When you've got something in your brain, you want it and you want it now and you want it to happen overnight and often it doesn't. But if the intention's there that we're all wanting to see something change, you know, in a short space of time, whilst the momentum is still there as well, Mother's Day wasn't on that long ago, so people will still remember the show and I'm sure still feel sort of affected by it. Um, and now we can all say that we're patrons of the charity. That's dedication that we genuinely do care.